Innovation is definitely not something to take lightly. But are you not sure about the concepts related to it? Don't worry, in the next few minutes, we'll be understanding all about them. Let's begin with the term deflation. It simply is the decrease in the general price level of goods and services throughout the economy. So when there is higher supply of goods and services, but not enough money to combat the situation, you may witness deflation. This is associated with significant unemployment and loss of value of money. If not taken care of, it may even result in recession. But don't worry, we have soldiers who can fight this enemy. These are increased government spending, low bank rate and repo rate. RBI can even print money and government can decrease the taxes to boost the demand. That was easy and smooth, wasn't it? Now, let's learn about the next term that is disinflation. I repeat, disinflation. It shows the rate of change of inflation over time. For example, suppose the rate of inflation in India was 5% in January and 4% in March. The economy is said to be experiencing disinflation in the first quarter. Coming to the next and most common term these days, that is stagflation. It is made up of two terms, stagnation and inflation. Stagnation simply means zero economic growth. So whenever you see an economic period of no growth, relatively high unemployment and inflation with decline in GDP, identify it as stagflation. Moving on to the not so common one, reflation. It is a phenomena when inflation returns after a spell of deflation, thereby indicating that economic growth is back in the economy. And lastly, let's understand about skewflation. It occurs when there is inflation in some commodities and deflation in other commodities. For example, high cost of living coupled with falling asset prices such as housing. It is neither inflation nor deflation. Too much talks about inflation. We'll not inflate it too much and rest our cases. Thank you.